In this video, you'll learn about a killer clown's KFC feast, a strangler's rage at his missing SpaghettiOs, a white supremacist murderer's final act of diabolical food-based spite, and so much more. These are some of the most insane death row last meals. You'll hear about each of these convicts' heinous crimes and the deranged meals they decided to go out with. We'll warn you though, this video will make you horrified and hungry. Let's start off with Oscar Ray Bolin Jr. This former Florida carnival worker was found guilty of first-degree murder and false imprisonment in 1986. Bolin was a serial killer sentenced to life in prison and eventually to death for the killing of Stephanie Ann Collins, age 17, Natalie Hawley, age 25, and Terry Lynn Matthews, who was 26. Bolin Jr.'s crimes were sadistic and gruesome, like something from a primetime detective thriller. Collins and Matthews were both found wrapped in white sheets after having been stabbed or slashed repeatedly and having their skulls crushed. And the scariest part is that he almost got away with it and may have even killed again were it not for another crime he committed, being a terrible husband. In 1982, before he began his killing spree, he committed a campaign of abuse and terror against Cheryl Hafner, whom he married a year later in 1983. He'd go on to commit his first murder in 1986, committing less lethal assaults against other women afterwards, and killed his other two victims that same year before separating from Cheryl in 1989. Bolin Jr.'s goose was cooked when Cheryl told her next husband about her ex's violent behavior and murderous bragging. When Cheryl's new hubby called the police tip line, these terrible acts of violence were put to an end. In 2016, Oscar Ray Bolin Jr. was put to death for his crimes, a full three decades after murdering the young women. He was 53 and executed via lethal injection. For his final meal, Bolin was reported to have ordered a ribeye steak, which he wanted to be cooked medium rare. He also asked for a baked potato with butter and sour cream, a salad that specifically had tomato and cucumber on the top, garlic bread, and a bottle of Coca-Cola as a beverage. For dessert, Bolin asked for a slice of lemon meringue pie. That's pretty sweet, unlike the crimes of our next contestant. A man named Earl Forrest found himself on the receiving end of the death sentence in Missouri for a series of murders he committed on the night of December 9, 2002. Forrest, who had apparently been drinking earlier that night, entered the home of one Harriet Smith, a woman who allegedly had agreed to buy a mobile home and a lawnmower for Forrest after he had introduced her to a source for supplying methamphetamine. During an ensuing altercation, Forrest shot Smith six times, killing her as well as a guest of hers named Michael Wells by shooting him in the head. After stealing $25,000 worth of methamphetamine, Forrest returned home, where a shootout with police ensued, resulting in the death of Deputy Joanne Barnes. Forrest also shot both Sheriff Bob Wooford and his own girlfriend, Angela Gamblin. However, both would thankfully survive their injuries. Charged and found guilty of three counts of first-degree murder, Earl Forrest would spend 11 years on death row. When the time finally came for his last meal, he chose to eat pasta, steak, tomatoes, cucumbers, a side of fruit, and a slice of chocolate cake washed down with a glass of milk afterward. Now there's an idea for a Got Milk commercial that would probably never get approved. Next on the menu is one Ronnie Lee Gardner, a man sent to prison in 1980 for robbery only to escape in 1981. When confronting a man who had been in bed with Gardner's girlfriend, he was wounded by a gunshot and arrested after being returned to prison, but not for long. Gardner would escape once again in 1984 after being taken to the hospital for a checkup overpowering a guard and taking his pistol. He would kill a man named Melvin Otterstrom, who tended the bar at the Cheers Tavern in Salt Lake City, Utah. A year later in 1985, Gardner was being transported from Utah State Prison to the courthouse to attend a pre-trial hearing for the second-degree murder of Melvin Otterstrom. It was upon entering the courthouse that an accomplice, Kara Jolly Hainsworth, handed him a revolver she'd smuggled inside in order to help Gardner pull off his latest escape attempt. She'd even hidden a bag containing a change of clothes, duct tape, and a knife for the man on sight. What ensued was a chaotic firefight that saw Gardner shot through the lung by guards before he took the life of an attorney, Michael Burdell, by shooting him. Gardner would take several hostages, including prison guards and even a vending machine serviceman, shooting and seriously wounding a bailiff before being made to surrender by armed police outside the building. Gardner would spend a quarter of a century waiting to be executed for his crimes, receiving life in prison for his murder of Otterstrom before being sentenced to death in 2010 for killing Burdell. His request for a final meal was hardly a one of everything on the menu list, but it was certainly pricey. Gardner intentionally fasted for 36 hours, only drinking liquids, before sitting down to his final dinner of expensive surf and turf, lobster tail, and steak. 
In addition, he was given a 7-Up to drink alongside and an apple pie with ice cream for afterward. He also made the request to be allowed to watch a showing of Lord of the Rings as he ate. Ronnie Lee Gardner would soon after be executed by firing squad, making him the third person in Utah to receive this penalty after the suspension of the death penalty was lifted in 1976. We hope he enjoyed Lord of the Rings even half as much as our next guy loves meat. It's often been said that it's hard to maintain being vegan or vegetarian since there's a scarcity of widely available and affordable options that fit those lifestyles. Luckily, there are at present a slowly increasing number of foods on the market for vegan and vegetarian folks, but the number of options tends to go up when it turns out a person has been lying about being a vegetarian the whole time. That brings us over to Stephen Michael Woods, who murdered a young couple in 2001, Ron Whitehead, who was 21, and Bethina Bros, who was 19. Both were shot multiple times in the head by Woods and had their throats cut as well. Yikes. Woods and an accomplice Marcus Rhodes were found to be in possession of personal items belonging to the couple, along with the murder weapons being uncovered at the home of Rhodes' parents. Multiple witnesses testified that Woods had spoken about his plans to commit the two murders and even spoke about his participation afterwards. While Marcus Rhodes was charged with capital murder and pleaded guilty, receiving life in prison, Stephen Woods was sentenced to death by lethal injection on August 27, 2002, in Texas, with his execution ultimately taking place on September 13, 2011. Despite having made earlier claims of being a vegetarian, Woods' final meal was full of meat, without so much as a fruit or vegetable in sight. Then again, he also claimed to have not killed Ron Whitehead and Bethina Bros, despite the evidence to the contrary, so maybe he just had a fraught relationship with the truth in general. His last meal consisted of two entire pounds of bacon, a large pizza topped with sausage, pepperoni, and every other type of meat you can imagine. He also had four fried chicken breasts, five chicken fried steaks, two hamburgers also topped with bacon, as well as French toast and garlic breadsticks with marinara on the side. Woods also received two pints of ice cream and a lot of sugary beverages to go with his meat-heavy meal, including two bottles of Mountain Dew, Pepsi, root beer, and sweet tea. If someone filmed this whole process, it would have been a video that was half Green Mile and half Epic Meal Time. There's a vintage YouTube reference for you. Woods wasn't the only one who wanted to do the do on his last 24 hours of Earth. The particularly despicable criminal Richard Cooey was sentenced to death for the sexual murders of two college students in 1986 and remained on death row for 20 whole years for a bizarre reason. By his own claim, at 5 feet 7 inches tall, weighing 270 pounds, he was too fat to safely execute, but sadly for Cooey, the state of Ohio found a way. When he was executed in 2008, he decided to go out with a meal that'd make your inner Cheeto dust-coated gamer proud. A T-bone steak with A1 sauce, onion rings, hash browns, french fries, toast with butter, four eggs over easy, a pint of Rocky Road ice cream, bear claw pastries, and Mountain Dew. When you're about to die, after all, it's not like you need to be watching your weight, right? We've got some even crazier examples to come, but at this point you might also be wondering, where did this tradition of the last meal even come from in the first place? Why do we give our most diabolical criminals a choice of a meal before going on to execute them anyway? It can't have just sprung out of nowhere, right? While some might misattribute this to the Last Supper within the Christian Bible, the tradition of giving a prisoner their final meal actually predates Christianity, dating all the way back to ancient Greece. Back then, it was likely born of the belief that a person sentenced to execution had to be fed so their spirit could cross over the river Styx without the risk that they would return from the underworld. Wouldn't want someone put to death to return as a vengeful, hungry ghost now, would you? This practice would later spread to ancient Rome, where gladiators were provided with a feast before the grueling experience of entering the Colosseum as a way to celebrate life before potentially facing death. Though personally, we're not sure we'd want to risk engaging in gladiatorial combat on a full stomach. You're supposed to wait at least 15 minutes, aren't you? That might actually be swimming. With this being a tradition going back to the ancient world, why isn't this video hours long with hundreds upon hundreds of crazy examples of last death row meals? Well, because some areas either saw this kind of thing coming or learned their lessons pretty quickly and put restrictions on the kinds of things that death row inmates can request. What kinds of restrictions, you might ask? Well, that depends on where in the country someone is sentenced and incarcerated while awaiting the death penalty. In Florida, for example, the maximum budget for a final meal is 40 US dollars, while in Louisiana and Oklahoma it's less than half that amount. Certain requests are also denied due to prison restrictions, especially for those who might ask for alcohol or cigarettes to accompany their meal. Anytime a prisoner's request cannot be fulfilled, substitutions are usually made. 
So if someone on death row was to ask for a Wagyu steak or a lobster, they likely wouldn't get it, and someone looking to dine out on a sirloin steak might receive a hamburger patty. That's all the prison had on hand. So with that context out of the way, let's return to some more of those crazy last meals. We've certainly all known our share of picky eaters. Perhaps you watching this at home are even one. Remember how we said that sometimes prisons will make substitutions for items if they don't have them available? Well, this might be the story of the infamous instance of that ever happening. And it couldn't have happened to a pickier eater. Thomas J. Grasso broke into the home of an elderly woman from Tulsa, Oklahoma, named Hilda Johnson. On Christmas Eve of 1990, Grasso attempted to steal Johnson's cheap television set and a meager 12 bucks from her purse and around the house. In order to do so, he murdered the 87-year-old woman with her own Christmas lights and bludgeoned her with an iron. Later in July of 1991, after selling Johnson's TV for only $125, Grasso would also murder Leslie Holtz, an 81-year-old man who lived in the same boarding house in Staten Island. Grasso then stole the man's social security check. He was given a life sentence in New York where there is no death penalty. However, he would later be extradited back to Oklahoma for killing Hilda Johnson, pleading guilty to her murder and being sentenced to death in March 1995 as a result. This technically made Grasso's death the first execution of someone convicted in New York State in over 30 years. But for his last meal, Grasso didn't quite get everything he asked for. He certainly didn't hold back on ordering a veritable feast, requesting to be given two dozen steamed mussels and two dozen steamed clams, along with a double cheeseburger from Burger King and half a dozen barbecue spare ribs. He had not only one but two strawberry milkshakes to pair with his meal, as well as half of a pumpkin pie with whipped cream and diced strawberries. The real sticking point though, the thing that really irked this multiple murderer and picky eater was an issue over, of all things, SpaghettiOs. Yeah, you heard that correctly, SpaghettiOs. As part of his final meal, Grasso had specifically requested a 16-ounce can of SpaghettiOs with meatballs to be served at room temperature. Not even warm? Gross! However, the prison substituted this with regular canned spaghetti and meatballs instead, leading Grasso to become incredibly incensed. He was so aggravated by this substitution that in his final statement to the press before receiving the lethal injection, Thomas J. Grasso was quoted as saying, I did not get my SpaghettiOs, I got spaghetti. I want the press to know this. Turns out there really is no pleasing some people. Of course, it'd be remiss of us to make a video on expensive last meal requests and not mention yet another prolific serial killer, John Wayne Gacy, also known as the Killer Clown, though he never actually killed anyone while dressed as a clown. His renown among his community in Chicago dressing up as a clown for local children might have garnered him a nickname that sounds like it was ripped straight out of a Stephen King novel, but don't let that fool you, Gacy was a monster of a man one of the United States' most notorious killers and guilty of some truly horrific crimes. In 1978, he was convicted of the murder of 33 teenage boys, 27 of whom he had buried in his backyard and in the crawl space beneath his home in the Chicago suburbs. For 12 of his murders, Gacy was sentenced to death, having already been given life in prison for the others. His execution was appealed, albeit unsuccessfully, and the Supreme Court of Illinois ruled that he was to receive the death penalty by lethal injection on May the 10th, 1994. Before his sentence was carried out, John Wayne Gacy would receive a last meal that mainly consisted of a large bucket of KFC original recipe fried chicken. During his life, Gacy had actually managed three KFC franchises in Waterloo, Iowa, an association that KFC was probably pretty upset about after all those murders came about. Alongside the fried chicken, he also had french fries, fried shrimp, and an entire pound of strawberries. Strangely, KFC and other fried chicken meals are a popular request among those on death row, with chicken fried steak being one of the most requested dishes in last meals. It's not the most requested final food, though. That title goes to ice cream. Yummy. Speaking of tasty frozen treats as a last meal, one of the most infamous domestic terrorists of all time had a hankering for something creamy and cold for his closing munch. In 1996, Timothy McVeigh committed the Oklahoma City bombing, where he filled a truck full of high explosives and detonated it next to a government building in Oklahoma City, killing 168 people, a crime for which McVeigh showed no remorse whatsoever. When he was executed in 2001, his last meal was two pints of mint chocolate chip ice cream. And personally, before he faced lethal injection, we hope he got brain freeze too. In the interest of balance, it's worth noting that some condemned killers end up ordering surprisingly spartan last meals. For example, Eileen Wernos, one of the rare female serial killers 
who killed as many as seven victims, decided not to have a last meal and instead just ordered a cup of black coffee before her execution in 2002. This is similar to the last request of Fritz Harman, a frighteningly early 20th century German serial killer who was executed in 1924. As was the custom of German capital punishment of the time, he was only told his execution date the night before it happened. He was given an expensive cup of Brazilian coffee and a cigar before his head was chopped off by a guillotine. There are some last meals that leave you feeling the effects of eating them long after you're done. And for this next entry, the lasting after effects of his final meal would be felt not just by him, but by everyone else on death row in the state of Texas. Lawrence Russell Brewer was a white supremacist found guilty of murdering a black man named James Byrd in Texas in 1998. Along with his two equally contemptible friends, Brewer would beat and torture his victim before chaining James Byrd to his pickup truck, then driving the man who was fully conscious during this time three miles until he was killed by a curb and his body dismembered. A documented member of the Confederate Knights of America and the Ku Klux Klan, this vile individual was found guilty of a hate crime and sentenced to death on September 23, 1999. Brewer was to be executed by lethal injection on September 21, 2011, but it was his expensive and extravagant last meal that would send ripples through the state of Texas's prison system. He ordered two chicken fried steaks, along with a large bowl of fried okra, a triple bacon cheeseburger, three fajitas, a cheese omelet, and a pound of barbecue with half a loaf of white bread. He also requested an entire meat lover's pizza, three root beers to drink, as well as a pint of ice cream and a slab of peanut butter fudge with crushed peanuts for dessert. And the kicker? Brewer didn't actually eat any of it. After requesting the elaborate spread, he then refused to have a single bite, wasting all of the food. The expense wasn't just monetary either. In fact, his disgusting actions would lead to Texas outright banning final meals for inmates on death row. And as of 2011, when Brewer was put to death, the state no longer fulfills requests for special meals. The state senator who called for an end to the practice, John Whitmire, went so far as to say, if you're fixing to execute someone under the laws of the state because of the hideous crime that someone has committed, I'm not looking to comfort them. Perhaps the greatest insult of this case isn't just that Brewer ordered an extravagant meal and refused to eat it, meaning no other Texas prisoners were afforded the option of a last meal, but the fact is that this is what Brewer is remembered for. It's acknowledged far less often than his despicable, brutal hate crime that resulted in the death of James Byrd. But Lawrence Russell Brewer isn't the only infamous serial killer who didn't feel all that peckish before his state-mandated demise. One of the United States' most sadistic and infamous killers, Ted Bundy, didn't make any food requests before his execution by electric chair in 1989. Because of this, he got the default Florida death row meal of steak, eggs, toast with butter and jam, hash browns, coffee, and juice all of which went to waste because Bundy decided not to eat any of it. He was causing trouble until the very end. However, when it comes to sheer death row gluttony, few can match the last meal of convicted murderer Peter J. Miniel. After refusing a plea deal and sending his trial to a jury, Miniel's devastatingly wrong miscalculation resulted in him landing on death row. However, despite his attempts to save his own life, failing miserably, Miniel decided he'd go out with style, or more likely an extreme case of acid reflux. He ordered 20 tacos, two kinds of ice cream, 20 enchiladas, two double cheeseburgers, fried chicken, pizza, and a fruitcake. If you're a particularly food-motivated person, you might now be thinking, that sounds pretty delicious, but you need some real impressive drinks to wash that down. You might be on the same wavelength as Miniel because, in addition to all that grub, he also ordered orange juice, root beer, Pepsi, and Coca-Cola. Yummers. That brings us to maybe the most expensive last meal ever requested. In 2005, Robert Dale Conklin was scheduled to face execution in Georgia. He'd been on parole for armed robbery and fell into an altercation with George Crooks, an attorney who was reported to have been Conklin's lover. During the altercation, Robert Dale Conklin stabbed George Crooks in the ear with a screwdriver, wiggling it around and then later dissecting Crooks' body. Conklin wrapped the remains in garbage bags, leaving them in a dumpster outside his apartment, even putting some of the body parts down in a waste disposal unit. A book on dissection of the body was even found in Conklin's bedroom when the police investigated after a maintenance worker at the apartment complex discovered the dissected body parts as well as a number of George Crooks' belongings inside the garbage bags. Conklin was condemned to execution by lethal injection, which was scheduled to take place on the 12th of July 2005, 21 years after the murder took place in 1984. Before receiving a sedative, a lung-paralyzing drug to slow his breathing, and a dose of lethal potassium chloride, 
Conklin was granted a last meal, and to call that a last meal might well be an understatement. It was an entire feast. For his last meal, Conklin requested and received a filet mignon wrapped in bacon, as well as shrimp sautéed in garlic butter with lemon. He also had a baked potato with butter alongside sour cream, chives, and bacon bits. Oh, and there was more. Corn on the cob, asparagus with hollandaise sauce, French bread with butter, and goat's cheese. For his dessert, Conklin had a cantaloupe, apple pie, and vanilla ice cream, and washed the whole lot down with an iced tea. Despite being thin in stature, Conklin ate everything, clearing two whole plates. To this day, his is still considered to be one of the most expensive, if not the single most expensive, last meal requests. Now, is anybody else feeling hungry after hearing all this? It makes you wonder, what would your last meal be? Let us know down in the comments. Now, check out what last hour on death row looks like minute by minute, or watch this video instead.